I'm Derek Pugh. I'm an author and historian. I write books about the settlement of the northern part of Australia. I've now got a story about the Overland Telegraph Line. I'm here in the Australian bush. About 600 kilometres north is the city of Darwin on the northern coast. 2,400 kilometres south is Port Augusta. The statistics for the Overland Telegraph Line project are astounding. There's 3,000 kilometres from the south coast to the north coast. They needed 36,000 poles, 36,000 pins and insulators to put on them, countless rolls of wire, 11 repeater stations between Port Augusta and Port Darwin, and they built them all and connected it up within two years. Uh, once the Overland Telegraph Line was linked to the undersea cable that went off to Java and to Singapore and all stations to, to London, uh, news could come in within seven hours. A heavy blow was indeed struck. Gasson himself thought that he'd killed 11 men, and as many as 50 may have died altogether. In fact, there's a creek not far from here named Skull Creek, after the number of human bones left lying in the sand. And he led a retribution trip to the Roper River, which possibly killed 50 or 60 Aboriginal people. Nobody really knows because they wouldn't say, but there were bones everywhere for a while. There were situations where it was beneficial for Aboriginal people. Once the uh, telegraph stations were established, it was a beacon for people to come in. We've got a couple of thousand kilometres to do from the south coast to the north, and I think it's going to prove to be quite an adventure. They saw Chambers Pillar from a distance, and they were the first people to climb it, and they've signed their names up on the rock here. It begs the question though, this is historically interesting, but when does it become graffiti? <laughs> Charles Todd was the hero of our Overland Telegraph Line story, and by the time he finished, he probably really needed a rest. At least we found the headstone, and we found the grave, which is great. We're a couple of kilometres northwest of Unadatta here, and this is the Angle Pole. This is where the Overland Telegraph Line changed direction to go to Alice Springs. Although some would say it's an Angle Pole because it's bent like a dog's hind leg. This is a very peaceful place now, and at this time of the morning it's even quite tranquil. But the arrival of the Telegraph Line operators, the miners, and the pastoralists, and everybody else that came up here, meant that the lives of Aboriginal people were changed forever. Here it is. This is the wreck of the young Australian. So, Jared, this is really exciting for me because this is definitive proof that John McDowell Stewart actually made it to the north coast of Australia. Yes. I'm, I'm about 50 kilometres from the centre of Australia, mate, on the way to Alice Springs. Oh, awesome. Craig knew the country and he knew the risks, but still, he died here of thirst in December 1871. But after a few hours, I realised that the people really cared for each other more than I believed possible, and there was a wonderful sense of belonging. The Overland Telegraph Line ended the geographical isolation and the tyranny of distance for most of Australia. In contrast, the people that lived here were probably some of the most isolated Europeans in the world. The Overland Telegraph Line was the greatest engineering achievement of 19th century Australia. It changed us completely. In modern terms, it was equivalent to the arrival of the internet. <laughs>